I love you, my little pog champ. Oh, <clears throat> sorry, I, I didn't realize my co on. Anyway, hi everyone. I am Team Roller 15, and welcome to my grammar class with special guest star, Magical. Um, first I must invite him to speak. He shall grace us with his presence. But anyway, yeah, I'm going to let him be teaching the class this time, like last time, and he's going to teach us all about adjective clauses and adverb clauses. And I'll just be in the background um, helping to manage the chat, as well as helping to answer questions. So without further ado, I shall let Magical come up stage. The floor is yours, Magical. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? I see you can. I see you can. Okay, so okay, so that is some good news to start with. Uh, Any time that you couldn't hear me well, just tell me, and I will try to fix it. So for today, first of all, Chiman, have you started the recording? Okay, okay. It's good. So, today we are going to talk about adjective and adverbial clauses. But before we jump into them, there is something we should say. Uh, this session is in continue of the last session that we had. In the last session, we talked about noun clauses. And thus, because not everyone would have been in, in the other class, first we are going to do a quick review on things that we had in the other session. To start with that, we are going to start with the definition of clause. Does anyone know what a clause is? It seems no one does. Okay, perfect. Uh, it's really apparent to me that everyone has been listening to the last session. Okay, never mind. We shall wait a bit more. I see some people are typing. First of all, this is for people who haven't seen the link. Okay? But uh, as for the clause meaning, seemingly no one does know the answer. So, I will say it myself. A group of words. Okay, so we are seeing something. A phrase. A group of words. Subject. Subject plus verb. Okay, so Frost here actually said the answer. So basically, a clause is a group of words which has a subject and a verb. So also Ankh Weifu was also correct. But Curious Owl, it is not a phrase. So, you may be thinking, what is the difference between clause and a phrase, okay? Anyone has any idea? Though we are not going to get deep into that, but just to answer the question. Benny said he's almost correct, but there is something you should fix in your second part of your sentence. A clause has a subject and predicate, but a phrase doesn't. The phrase is a group of words, but it doesn't have any subject and verb. Okay, so I do not know how is your name uh, re pronounced, I guess, Mungil, but Mungil and Nagan both are correct. So basically, uh, to say it, Phrase is a group of words, while clause is a group of words which has subject and a verb. 
a clause a group of words, the subject verb on unit. The second group of words contains the subject word unit. The boss goes to this clause. The phrase is a group of words without the subject verb unit. Yes, that is correct. So now that we know that what a clause is, let's get a bit more deep into it. So in the last session, we said that we have two kinds of clauses. Is the sentence the same like a clause? You, this question will be answered. So we have two kinds of clauses. Does anyone remember anything about them? We have a main clause, okay? Independent and dependent clause. And as we will say it again, yes. So you are correct, all of you, okay? So even Sidra is correct. We will get to that. So. We have two main types of clauses, not two main, actually the only types of clauses that we have are main clauses, also known as independent clauses, and dependent clauses, also known as subordinate clauses. I'm just going to write it down. Just like that, we have it. So we know that we have two different kinds of clauses, independent ones and dependent ones. Now comes the question, what is the difference between these clauses? As you can guess from the name itself, independent clauses are basically independent, which means they do not need anything else to be added to them in order for them to have a meaning, while dependent clauses need something. This can be explained further if you have an example of them. So for now, can anyone give me an example of an independent clause? Yes, that's, that is a good way to say it, Beryl. So now we are looking for an example of independent clause or a main clause. Yes, an example. If you know it, you can come up with an example. And if you do not know this well, well, it's no worries. You can just see and look at the other people's examples. She walked to the shop. It was dreary. Let's for now go with one depend one independent clauses. Okay, so we have quite examples here. We have, she walked to the shop, it was very, she does the homework, she walked to the shop, it's a main clause, yes, I was tired after working all day, so I decided to go to bed early. I am happy I am sleeping. Oh, no, do not leave us, please. Talk, so we are reviewing things, and we get deep into any new things, because I want this class to be even for beginner and intermediate students. Uh, Boreal, for now, let's just not get into the... Mm, no, actually. Uh, we will talk about that later. But yes, it, it is correct. If you can fake that, you've got it. I do not know what that means. I mean, unless it's an example. So basically, uh, as we can see, let's say... Some of the examples that people said, she does the homework, is an independent clause. I am happy. I am sleeping. Uh, as Boreal said, she walked to the shop. 
I was tired after working all day. These are all independence clauses. Yes, John is having breakfast. I was sleeping. Yes, that actually, that is a good example. Loco, we will use that. So, all independence clauses can act as sentences. Why? Because they have a subject and a verb, and what does a sentence need? Nothing more than these. And it gives and conveys a full meaning and full thought with it itself. Now, we go for dependent clauses. So, like an example that Leko has given us. When you called me. See, I'm just going also to actually make this in reply of his message. So you can see the message itself. Yes, it expresses a complete thought. A dependent clause does that. But an independent clause does not express a complete thought. You can see from here, when you called me, it has a subject. The subject is you. It has a verb. The verb is called. But yet, it is not giving us a complete thought. When you like read this, when you called me, you expect something else to be there. You know, it, it cannot act as a full sentence itself. It needs something else to explain it further. Okay. So basically, dependent clauses, as you can see from the example, need something else for them to be understandable. Like when you called me, what you did, uh, how I said that, you know, these are all independent clauses. Uh, these are all dependent clauses, and they have a subject and a verb, but they're not a, a sentence because they do not convey a full meaning and full thought. Someone asked a good question, and the Chiman actually gave a good answer. Is there any difference between an independent clause with a sentence or an independent clause equals to a sentence? And then Chiman says, an independent clause can stand alone as a sentence, but not all sentences are simply independent clauses. What that means is, you all said uh, good examples, good examples for independent clauses, and all of them could be a full sentence themselves. But a sentence is not necessarily made of one clause. It can have more than one clause. Okay? Are the consequences? No, they're not. So see, I say... So we have this example in here. We say, we will go out whenever you are ready. This sentence is made of two clauses. We will go out and whenever you are ready. The first one is an independent clause. It can stand alone and be a sentence. But the second one is a dependent clause, meaning it needs something else to be modified, uh, to be justified and explained. Okay. But we use them together and it is completely fine. And it is a full sentence. So the difference between an independent clause and a sentence would be An independent clause can be a sentence. Yes, that's good and correct. But a sentence cannot be an 
penance clause can not can necessarily not be yes let's say in that way and necessarily not be an independent clause because a sentence can be made of multiple clauses for example if you like me uh call me okay this is a sentence but this is not an independent clause itself Yes, I like you. This is an independent clause, so it can be a sentence. But a sentence can be made of different clauses and multiple clauses, and thus it cannot be one single independent clause. That's it for now. I, if you have understood the general thing, it is okay. And thus we can continue further. And thank you, uh, British Unit, for your expression of feelings. Okay. Someone else noticed something when we were saying and talking about categories of clauses. They said restrictive and non-restrictive clauses. That is another type of categorizing clauses that we will talk about later. So... Just know that we haven't forgotten that. It will be talked about later. So we said that dependent clauses, the clauses that needed something else to be justified, were also categorized into different types. Uh, can someone say those types? A dependent clause can be of different types. What are those? Does anyone know that? Noun and adjective clauses? Yes, they are two of them. The question is, what are the categories of a dependent clause? Yes, Boreal, you got it. So, clauses are independent or Dependent and dependent clauses are either a noun clause, uh, an adjective clause, or an adverbial clause. Let me see simple compound. Oh, you're talking about different types of sentences? I guess it is true, but we are not going to talk about different types of sentences in today's session because that is not the point. Uh, Shahin, you needn't worry about it. I mean, because the reason we are just passing everything so fast is because... It is not the topic that we are going to discuss today. We just discussed about all of these in very, uh, very precisely and deeply at the other session. We are just reviewing. Okay, so we said we have different kinds of clauses, and each clause has a different, uh, and each dependent clause can have different categories. We talked about noun clauses the other day, and first we are today we are not going to talk about it again. And we are going to start with adjective and adverbial clauses. The first one, in my opinion, adjective clauses are easier, so we would start with them. An adjective clause is our current topic. What is an adjective clause?
a clause that describes something, a clause that describes the subject. Okay? I'm not going to give my opinion on if whether they are correct or not. Clause with a subject adjective noun. Mm -hmm. Yes, Shanice, I see that. Any other opinions? A clause that works to describe a noun in a sentence. Okay. So we are additional meaning. That is also interesting. So about the meaning of an adjective clause. An adjective clause is a clause which acts as an adjective, basically. But what does that mean? I do not really expect everyone to understand with that. That means that an adjective clause is a group of words with a subject and a verb which act as an adverb, uh, sorry, adjective. And here's the thing, a group of words with a subject and a verb equals to clause act as an adjective equals to adjective. Putting them together, we have adjective clause. Okay. Adjectives modify nouns and pronouns. Adjectives tell us what kinds, how many, or which one. We, that is correct. Okay, and we will talk about that right now. Is it true? An adjective, yes, it is. It is okay. Have you been here since the beginning of the class or not? No, uh, I cannot pronounce that their, their name, but the one who asked, uh, who said they have no idea what we're talking about. Have you been here from the begin beginning of the class? Okay, I don't know. They are not answering. So I guess they haven't been here. So here's the thing. As we said, we know what an adjective clause is. A group of words with a subject and a verb, which is basically the clause meaning itself. And we talked about clauses. Or, uh, which acts as an adjective, but we did not talk about an adjective. What is an adjective then? Adjective? What is an adjective? Descriptive words, describing word, a word to describe something. Adjective describes a noun. Adjective is used to describe things. It's a type of word that are used to describe something. A word used to describe a characteristic. A word naming an attribute of a noun. Okay, that's enough. You, m most of you said the correct definition. But adjective is something which describes a noun or a pronoun. Okay? And this something can either be a group of words, can either be one word, can either be a group of words with a subject and a verb. If it is one word, well, it is an adjective. Like, it's, it's a single word, okay? 
Yes, you did. But, you know, it is not about things that you tell because it is not a private class. I just repeat the information so other people can use it if they have not seen your messages. That's the thing. Yes, we will go with examples. Actually, let's let you all come with an example. A good person. Let's go with different examples. We, for now, we are only going to use one word adjectives, okay? Do not go with phrases or clauses. Yes. Uh, let's go with Jutes's example because it is a sentence. We love this beautiful paint. Uh, actually, painting. What is uh, the adjective in this sentence? Beautiful. Yes, exactly. So, all of you made good examples. An adjective. Okay, now we're going to talk about the places of an adjective. An adjective can come before a noun, such as all of the examples that you all made. Let's go with good person. This adjective came immediately before the noun that it is describing. It is describing person, so it came before a good, uh, person and it is like good. Or it can come immediately after the noun that it is describing. Actually, let's, before we go to that, it can come after the noun, okay, not immediately. So let's say Jack was old. This old is an adjective in here. Though this may also seem like, a, uh, yes, this is an adjective, but for some people, who have also been in my other class, this is also a subject complement, okay? Person is, let me see, oh, person is a noun that it is being defined. No, who said that? He may still be old. I am cold. Yes, cold in here is an adjective because it is describing the noun, which is I. And here... Actually, that is a really good example. The reason for that is because I is a pronoun. We said that adjectives describe a noun or a pronoun. So in this example, you can see I am cold. Cold is a describing a pronoun, while like in Jack, is, Jack was old. Old was describing Jack, which is a noun. I don't know, Emir. I, I don't know. Maybe it's just... The way you are. All of you are cool. Because you're all human. And adjectives can come immediately after a noun. Can anyone give an example of that? Immediately after the noun. So like in the examples that we had, like I am cold or Jack was old. There is this was or am between the adjective. Give me an example of an adjective which comes immediately after the noun it's describing. No. Okay, Frost, please stop with that. And if you want me to explain it, in that case, uh, the adjective is coming before the noun. A classy person. No. Okay, I, I will just type the question for you. They, in classy person, the adjective comes before the noun that it is defining, not after it. Amazing hair. Amazing is the adjective. Hair is the noun. As you can see, it is still before the noun that it described. First idea. Uh, 
Yeah. Like, Tamari, this goes in, like, different kinds of adjectives, okay? And we're not really going deep into them for now. That hair is beautiful. It didn't come immediately after it. There is this ease between them. Again, Shrek, questioning is the adjective of approach. Okay. I will say it myself. Is your, oh, wait, wait a second. Is your teacher Australian? Um, I guess that works. But that is for a question. Let's, let me give you an example. Like, we have... This is not, maybe you may not see it in, like, beginner or intermediate books, but we have such things such as the Princess Royal. Or, like, the worst, um, let's say, the worst, like, dreams imaginable. Or, like, the best seats available. The best mood. Um, but there is something. The best, actually, it is not working, because the best is... Uh, before the noun that it is defining. See, we have the Princess Royal and the worst dreams imaginable and the best is available. In all of these, the Dream Eater, that is a noun itself. Oh, wait, no. That, 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 that works. That works. Part. The Horrible Season. No, Horrible is defining season and it is before it, so it is not in the thing that we needed. Six feet deep. Yes, it works. Okay, uh, so please stop the examples because I just want to finish this and give a conclusion and summary of the adjective itself. Uh, no, uh, what you said is actually correct, Bloody Mirrors, but we were, like, looking for a specific example. We started it 34 minutes ago. Actually, 30 minutes. No, I'm not becoming mad. I just want everyone to say focus, because, you know, so some people may not talk and may try to follow the class. They may just get lost. Yes, it is. It is Janice. The cold winter is coming. Yes, in that case, adjective is before uh, the noun. There is no question now, I'm just writing the summary.
because I'm not talking winter. That's the reason. Okay, so this is it for adjectives. Adjectives are something which describes a noun or a pronoun. Adjectives come, one, before the noun or pronoun they describe, like old man. Two, they come after the noun or pronoun they de describe, such like what he said was beautiful. Three, they come immediately after the noun or pronoun they, they describe. I can't say English. Somewhat interesting. Now that we know what an adjective is, what, do, what is it called when you form an adjective based on a few words again? Um, say if those few words have a subject and a verb, it is called the clause. But if they do not have a subject and a verb, it is called a phrase. So we have adverb phrases and adverbial, uh, so, sorry, you have adjective phrases and adjective clauses. In today's session, we are only going to talk about adjective clauses. Uh, C. A clause has a subject and a verb. Okay, a group of words with a subject and a verb. While a phrase does not have a subject and a verb and is just a group of words itself. Let me give you one example because you're asking. It, but we will move from it very fast, okay? We are not going to concentrate on it. This is specifically for anyone who wants to know the difference of a clause and a phrase in an example. Uh, this is not part of our class, okay? Just know that. So, for instance, dogs that have rolled in the mud are not allowed upstairs. It has a subject and a verb, okay? The subject in here is that, and the verb is have rolled. But in the second one, we do not have any subject or uh verb, okay? And it is simply a group of words. So the second one is a phrase, while the first one is a clause. It, actually, Emir, you can leave whenever you want, okay? You do not need to worry about it. This class is just for volunteer people, and everyone join voluntarily. I hope you use the class as much as you can before you leave it. So now we know the difference uh, between a, an adjective clause and an adjective phrase in a very slight sense. So let's get back to adjective clauses. So an adjective clause, the first thing that we need to know is what, how are adjective clauses made? Okay. An adjective clause. Before we get to how they are made, let's see what is their characteristics. Characteristics of an adjective clause. It has three characteristics. Let's see how many of them you can say. Okay, Winter said it has one subject, two verb. 
actually we put that in one thing, okay? So the first characteristic was found. It has a subject and a verb. Hero, that is correct, but it is not complete. What does noun mean, hero? Object, no, it, it, no, no. Um, see, what Amethyst said is also correct. They describe a noun. So the second definition, the second trait that they have is that they describe a noun. Oh, no. Uh, okay, I hope you have not sent it yet, but we will talk about it later, okay? We are not talking about different types of uh, adjective clauses. We are only talking about different traits and characteristics that they have. Janice, that is completely correct. Yes. So, uh, just, I'm going to like react this with what Janice said because she is completely correct. An adjective clause it has a subject and a verb. It is its first characteristic. The second characteristic is that it tells us something about the noun. And for now, these are just logical because it has a subject and a verb because it is a clause. It tells us something about the noun or the pronoun because it is adjective. And the third, it will start with a relative pronoun or a relative adverb. Okay, so let's get a bit more deep into it. For now, let's do something. I'm going to type for you the relative pronouns, okay? Because we are going to talk about the third characteristic. So, if it starts with the relative pronoun or relative adverb, I have written the relative pronouns and re relative adverbs for you in parentheses. Relative pronouns are who, whom, whose, that, or which, while the relative adverbs are when, where, and why. You may be like, okay, uh, what is the difference? I don't get it. I like, what is a relative adverb? Basically, a relative adverb is something that starts an adjective clause. And we will talk about the difference of these two later on. For now, we are going to have our first exercise of the day. This exercise is that I will give you some examples, and I want you to find the adjective clauses in them. The first example. The stars that shone like car headlamps illuminated the field. Find the adjective clause. Some people said the answer. Let's have a look. 
we have this example. Okay, the stars that shone like car headlamps illuminated the field. I'm just going to write it again, and now we are going to investigate it. That is our relative pronoun. Which means that an adjective clause is going to be asserted. Shown is the verb of our clause. And the rest of it is just the group of words that we needed. Some people said that illuminated is uh, like the adjective. No, illuminated in here is the verb. It comes from the word illuminate, you know, and it's your under the illuminating. Someone said that. That is a relative pronoun, okay? It is not the whole adjective clause. It is only the re relative pronoun of it. It is the beginning of the adjective clause. And some other use said light car headlamps. Okay, something that you should notice is, first, you should not omit that or any relative pronoun that it has in the beginning of it. I'm going like to show you some other examples and you, you will understand it, okay? Never, ever uh, omit the relative pronoun or relative adverb when you're going to say the clause because they are part of the clause itself. Let's go with another example. Maybe now that you have seen it, you will understand how to, it is. We are expecting days that will melt the tarmac. Find the adjective clause. Okay. Most of you got it correct, which is very good. So, some things. It is not melt the tarmac. It is that will melt the tarmac, okay? As I said, do not omit the that's it. In the beginning, do not omit the relative pronoun or the relative adverb because they are part of the adjective clause. Okay, Hero, notice that. And like, I cannot read your name, Madara, I would call you. You should also notice that. But other than that, other people were correct. And just in case, because someone said we is the subject, it is not an adjective clause. Okay, I will call you Ray if you're okay with that. Now let's go with an, another example. So for now, we only saw examples in which the adjective clause was started with a related pronoun, that. Let's have a look at this example. A person who talks when you wish him to listen. Actually, this is... Wait, let's do something. This is the definition of a word, so here you will... Here you go, you learned something new. Who talks? A person who talks? Actually, Shanice is right. The answer is, who talks when you wish him to listen? The whole thing is the adjective clause. Yes, Vladimir, you are also correct. A person in here is our subject. Okay? And who talks when you wish him to listen is the adjective clause. 
now there must be this question for you. Okay, how can I understand if something is an adjective clause or not? It is hard for me. Ah, uh, yes, it, it's okay. Ray? Or like Raymond's? See, there is this very little and easy way to find out if something is an adjective clause or not. And it is just to replace it with an adjective. Let's have a look. A person. Actually, let's go with some, another example and we will show it on that. We have this example. Find the adjective clause. Oh, wait, it is not sending. Can anyone hear me? I guess he can't. Ah. Uh. Okay, so a uh, magical mic is, yeah. Let me see if I can reinvite him. Okay. Hello. Sorry. I Hello. Okay. Sorry. I, I was disconnected. So with the example, I was I was sending an example. See, we have this example. The carpets that you brought last year have rotted. Find the adjective clause. That you bought last year? The carpets that you bought? See, most of, not most of you, some of you are correct, some of you are not. See, uh, the carpet that you brought last year, the carpet is the subject, the noun that we are describing. That you brought last year is an adjective clause. Some of you just, when you find the verb, you stop. Okay, so you say maybe that you brought is, actually, it is bought or brought, it is bought, yes, okay. You may say, okay, that you bought is the clause because I found the subject, I found the verb, so it is done. But it is not because it, there is something else. This last year is actually the adjective. See, all of the adjective clauses that we had had an adjective within themselves. Let's have a look. Remember this example? We are expecting days that will melt the tarmac. Okay. Yes, exactly. Yes, exactly. It is it. You see that it is describing something. Yes, what you brought can also be an adjective. No, it can't. It is an adverb clause. We will understand that later when we reach the adverb clauses. So see, I said you can replace adjective clauses with an adjective, right? Can anyone replace the adjective clause in this example with an adjective? I see. If you replace it, the answer would be we are expecting sunny days. Oh, no, wait.
Well, okay. Okay. Um. Yeah, I think he got disconnected again. Okay. Okay, I'm so sorry. I just checked the whole family. No one is using the internet. I don't know what is happening. Um, so you found the adjective clause in the example that we had. Then I had this question for you. The question being, let me send the example again. If that will melt the tarmac is our adjective clause, how can we replace it with an adjective? We are expecting hot days. We are expecting rain. Uh, I guess you do not know what is happening. But yeah, that won't work. The question is, how can we replace the adjective clause with an adjective? Because all adjective clauses act as an adjective. And if they act as an adjective, so they can and must be able to be replaced with another adjective. Okay, so for example, in that one, we can say we are expecting sunny days. We are expecting blazing days, sunny days, better days. All of you, all of the things that you said were correct. We are expecting your family. Okay, but well, we need to replace it with an adjective, and as we did in all of the examples that people provided. Let's go with another example that we had. We had this example. Dogs that have rolled in mud are not allowed upstairs. I'm going actually to show the adjective clause because that is not the case. Replace this with a single word adjective. Dirty dogs. Yes, that works. They have rolled in the mud. Oh, okay. Can we use there before days? No, we can't. The reason for that is it goes back to articles. Let me see if I still have the message of mine, which was about articles. I provided it before. Seemingly, I can't find it. Take care, Raymond. Dogs with dirty mounts are not allowed upstairs. Their tainted dogs are not allowed upstairs. Yes, it works, Winter. Um, Vladimir, what you said is an adjective phrase. With the dirty mouse is an adjective phrase. Okay, it is not a single word adjective. And just in case, Winter, that would be their tainted. There is a hyphen between dirt and tainted. But yes, you got it. So for my example, it would be muddy dogs are not allowed upstairs. I am going to express and bold the adjective. Muddy dogs are not allowed upstairs. I simply just replaced the adjective clause with a single word adjective. And for one last example with this, a star is that shown like car Headlamps illuminated the field. Can you replace it with an adjective? A star's shiny illuminated the field. Shiny stars illuminated the fields. Bright stars. Yes. 
all of you are saying it correct, which means I believe that you have understood it, which is awesome and perfect. Good night, Raymond. And for this last example, and then we're done with this matter. <clears throat> so, how can we replace this with a single word adjective? See, it is not important for it to relate to it or not, okay? Just see if you can just somehow replace it with an adjective. Maybe the adjective that does not relate. Yes, a talkative person, a listening person. Uh, Winter, well, no, like, not like that. Uh, you should not omit uh, the subject. The subject here is person. You should not omit it. You should not omit the noun that is being under described. Yes, a bored person works, and that's it. You all got it. Yes, then, Winter, give it one more try, one more shot. Maybe get it. An ignoring person, yes. Is happy. What do you mean by is happy, hero? And Rain and Tamari, both of you are correct. Yes, that works. A person is happy. No, you should say a happy person. Oh, actually, wait, that is... That is that that is correct. Yes, that works. That works. My bad. Hello, Pipikan. Now that we understood that all adjective clauses can be replaced with an adjective, we can always find out if something is an adjective clause or not. Let me give you one clause and tell me if it's an adjective clause or not. Okay. Find the clause and tell me if it is an adjective clause. You say it is an adjective clause, okay? Yes, the clause is what we did. But is it an, is it an adjective clause or not? Is what we did an adjective clause? That's the question now. Yes, cause bad is an adjective and it's describing what we did. Actually, because of the same reason, Emmy Fish, it is not an adjective clause. In here, bad is an adjective, okay? And bad is describing what we did. We said that Adjectives describe nouns or pronouns. If it is an adjective clause, how is another adjective defining it? You know, in here, what we did is a noun clause. I didn't expect you to understand that or know it unless you have participated in another class of mine. Though, yes, bad is an adjective, but what we did is not the, an adjective clause. No, you don't. It's okay. Let's see if we can replace this with an adjective. What we did is bad. Actually, it was bad. Let's, like, pretty was bad. I mean, this does not make sense. Okay? So it is not an adjective clause. With that being said, let's continue to the next part of our... Uh, it does not make sense. Okay. 
but pretty bad makes sense. Uh, but we will talk about that later when we reach uh, adverbs. Okay, thank you for staying till now with us, RJ. Take care. That person was bad. Yes, that person is not an adjective, it's just a noun. You could replace noun clauses with nouns, but you cannot replace them with adjectives. You, you see, you cannot say beautiful was bad because beautiful is an adjective and beautiful was bad does not make sense. And thus, what we did is not an adjective clause. And by pressing here, I didn't mean very, I meant beautiful and handsome, okay? Let's continue. Adjective clauses. We said that ad adjective clauses can start with two things. Uh, what are them? Oh, okay, Shanice. Take care. Thank you for staying to us till now with us. Why did you do that to yourself, Mimi? Okay. So let me ask the question. Oh, Leko, you did it also. Oh my gosh. Subjects. No, they didn't start with subjects. They had subjects in them, but they didn't start with subjects. A relative pronoun or an, a relative adverb. Exactly, Winter. I said there is a difference between these two. And now we are going to talk about the difference. But before we do that, let me just say the relative pronouns and relative adverbs one more time. These are relative pronouns and relative adverbs. And now we are going to say, talk about the difference. The difference comes in this, that relative pronouns can be omitted. No, not family words, not WH family words, because like we do not have how, and it is part of the WH family word. Okay. Uh, because we do not have it thus, that is not the correct thing. Though I thought about that when I wanted to explain it at first, but then I realized, well, we can't. I get you. So the difference is that you can omit relative pronouns. So let me give you an example. The rats that John uh, saw yesterday was in the kitchen. Well, obviously, our adjective clause is something that you will all tell me. What is the adjective clause? That John yesterday, that John saw yesterday, yes. That John saw yesterday is our adjective clause. No, Rainbow, we have an adjective, but it is in the form of a clause. See, uh, very well, what you're making a mistake is that the rat is not part of the adjective clause. It is the noun that is being defined. In an adjective clause, we do not conclude the noun. We do not include the noun that is being defined, okay? Do not do that. So, uh, that John saw yesterday is an adjective clause. That's good that you have gotten it. And now, here's the thing. That is a relative pronoun, okay? We all know that. And it means I can omit it. So, the rat John saw yesterday was in the kitchen. This is still an adjective clause, though it doesn't have a relative pronoun because it is omitted, because it is hidden within the sentence. And this is when things get a bit tricky. 
Let me give you another example. Yes, it does not have that. So, in this example, find the adjective clause and try omitting the pro relative pronoun in it, if any. Exactly. Who claimed to have a limp is our adjective clause. Let me tell you something. Some people thought maybe who claimed to have a limp sprinted after the boss is like the adjective clause. How can we understand when an adjective clause ends? When a clause ends itself, whenever you face another verb. Okay? So an adjective clause ends exactly before you reach the the second verb because an adjective clause only has one verb like or actually all dependent clauses have one verb see uh actually do not see if you didn't understand it uh, do not worry like i was saying this for people who made the mistake and i guess they have understood it you didn't make the mistake you wrote so it is okay Let me give you another example, but in this one, I'm going to omit the relative pronoun. And I'm wondering if we can find the adjective clause. Try finding the adjective clause in this one. Okay, so you're all of you are saying you bought last year. How did you? We had this a bit different. Actually, it was not the same exactly, but yeah. How did you find it? How did you find the adjective clause? Mo, the adjective clause is there, but the relative pronoun is omitted. I will show you the full sentence later. You you follow their, your heart. Well, that makes sense. Very what did something good in here. And so did, I don't know how to pronounce your name, but DJ Wall. An instinct, yes, I, I agree with that. See, you just add something to it. So like th this was the sentence itself. The carpets which you bought last year have gone moldy. If you do not find any relative pronouns, see if you can add your relative pronoun. If you can add your own relative pronoun into it, well, it is an adjective clause. But if you can't, then it is not. Let's go with another example. Tell me if this is an adjective clause or not. I don't remember a time when words were not dangerous. Okay, exactly. I don't remember uh, when words were not dangerous. Uh, if you made a mistake, it is when words were not dangerous. It is not the other part. In this example, can I omit when? 
I mean, can I say I don't remember time words were not dangerous? Amit means remove. Can I remove it? Yes. Okay. Let's see what others have to say. Rainbow also says yes. I guess everyone is going to say yes, right? Right. But the answer is no. Which is maybe interesting for you. Why can't you omit it? That's the question. You cannot omit it because, as we said before, we have two different kinds of things that an adjective clause starts with relative pronouns and relative adverbs. We can only and only omit relative pronouns. If an adjective clause starts with a relative adverb, you cannot omit it. You cannot omit the relative adverb. That's the thing about relative adverbs. Relative adverbs were when, why, and who. So, like in this old example that we had, were a person who talks when to him. A person who talks when you wish him to listen. In this example, you cannot omit who, because who is a relative adverb. No, wait, 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 wait a second. I doubt it. Let, let, me, let me see. Where? Oh, yes. When, where, or why? Who, who is also one of them sometimes? You see, you can remove you can remove related pronouns but not relative adverbs. But sometimes you can also not remove related pronouns in such examples that it does not make sense anymore. Uh, we will talk about commas later. See? Really? Yes. Actually, Vinter, thank you for uh, saying it. I made a mistake. Related adverbs are, as we said before, when, where, and why. You can never omit relative adverbs, but you can sometimes omit relative pronouns. When, uh, so now comes this question. When can't you remove and omit relative pronouns? When your sentence would not make sense anymore. Like in this example, a boar. Okay. In this example, who is a relative pronoun? But you can't remove it because the sentence no longer makes sense. Goodbye, Amy Fish. Thank you for saying it because I was doubting if I should explain it or not. But when you said it, we should just do it. Okay. Whenever. Uh, you can omit relative pronouns when they're not acting as a subject. We said a clause has a subject and a verb. Okay. But in like most of the examples that we saw, we didn't have a separate subject. Sometimes the subject is like that, which, or who. Okay. Sometimes the subject is hidden in these. Let's say with the example of those dogs that we had earlier, we say dogs that have rolled in mud are not allowed upstairs. Yes, who is sometimes a subject. I actually think, oh, no, yes, sometimes. That is a relative pronoun, 
and the subject of the adjective clause. Yeah, you see, so whenever this subject, uh, whenever your related pronoun is acting as a subject, you cannot omit it. But if it is not, then go on and you can omit it and you can be happy with your life. I mean, like most natives maybe do that. No, and you can, um, um, you can always replace an adjective clause with a single word adjective, okay? You can always replace it. But now we are talking about the subject of the adjective clause. Uh, it makes sense if you do not. The dogs have rolled in mud are not allowed upstairs. It doesn't. Dogs have rolled in mud are not allowed upstairs. At first, seemingly it does. Dogs have rolled in mud. Yes, it makes sense, but... When you read this, the rest of the sentence, it no longer does. You're welcome, Leco. I'm still removing myself. I'm I'm still learning myself. Yes, only the clean dogs are allowed. It's the definition, the meaning of it. Now, let's go. I guess we can conclude this thing. Let's have some examples and then finish this subject so we can move to adverbial clauses. Let me see. Yes, yes. That is, we are going to talk about two things before we end the thing, and the, one of them is the, these clauses. See, let's say we have this example. Find the adjective clause and tell me if, we can, um, if I can omit the relative pronoun or the adverb. If any. Yes. The adjective clause is that ate the chicken and we cannot remove it because, well, simply that is the subject. Exactly. You learned it, and you can now use adjective clauses whenever you want. And actually, you can identify them. So basically, just to summarize, before we summarize, let's say the last points, and then we will go for them. There is this very specific and common asked question. Can we use commas with adjective clauses? That, that is the question. Remember earlier, like at the beginning of the class, when I asked you about different types of clauses, most of you said they are either dependent clauses or independent clauses. But one specific person said they are either restrictive or non-restrictive. Clauses, dependent clauses, are either restrictive or non-restrictive. What does that mean? That means that dependent clauses can either be crucial and part of the sentence, and if you omit them, the sentence would not make any sense, or they are not crucial. Uh, let's have a look at this example. What you did was bad. We had this example, and we all know that what you did is a noun clause, okay? 
if I admit what you did, it does not make sense. Was bad is not a full sentence. You see, what you did was bad. What you did is the dependence clause. And if I, I admit what you did, it just it's like was bad. Was bad is not a correct sentence. Okay? But in adjective clauses, you can always, no, no, so, uh, excuse me, you can sometimes put commas when. Let me show you an example. In this example that we earlier had, the carpets which you bought last year have gone moldy. There are two cases. The first one. If, this, if the listener or the reader does not know which carpets you're talking about, which you bought last year is crucial. But if they, because it is informing them of like which type of carpets. Though, if the speaker or the listener, if the listener or the reader knows which carpets, like let's say in your house, there's only one carpet. So when you say the carpets, they know that you're talking about the only carpet that is there, okay? In those times, it is not necessary and it can be omitted because it still makes sense. Chiman had a very good explanation of this earlier. I see if I can find it. See, Chaiman said something before, which is actually a very good summary of restrictive clauses and non-restrictive clauses. We also talked about these in the other class, so we are just going to review them. Yes, but no worries, I guess we can go with it. Restrictive also known as essential, also known as defining clauses, cannot be removed and are never used with commas. Non-restrictive or non-essential or non-defining clauses can be removed and always used with commas. So let's say we have this example. Actually, I think I can provide it here. Let me I think I know which example you're talking about. If, if, if you can, it would be such okay, a good thing, okay. actually. So... Just do this and yeah, exactly. It's this magical said there. Oh, oh uh, go ahead. About, uh, about something Winter was saying. Uh, double dash is the same as comma. Okay, do not worry about it. Let me let me put it this way. See, if what you want to say can be put in parentheses, then it is non restrictive. Okay. Okay, like I'm talking to you, the person I love the most, you know who I mean. Um, who? So, see, we have like the person I love the most, who you met yesterday, is going to come to my house. Like, we, when we're chatting, well, we do not use commas. We use parentheses. Or if you're British, you would call them brackets. Okay? If it can be put in parentheses, then it is not restrictive, which means if I'm going to write it, like, in a letter or something, I'm just going to put commas instead of parentheses. But if it cannot be put in parentheses, then it is restrictive, which means it is essential for our sentence. I hope that makes sense.
Yeah, what Chiman said is actually very good. Thank you, Chiman. I really needed that. I don't know, somehow restrictive and non-restrictive clauses are a bit hard for me to explain. With that being said, we can move to our final matter for adjective clauses, and that is Sometimes, or actually most of the time, that we see no one uses which for adjective clauses, which is a relative pronoun, okay? Like, let's say, this sentence is completely correct. Mark's dog, which ate the chicken, is looking guilty. But I'm pretty sure that most of you, when you're going to write this sentence, you would say Mark's dog that ate the chicken is looking guilty. And here's the thing, both of them are correct, and both of them have the same meaning. In the other, uh, in another way, in another way, which and that are interchangeable. You can use any of them, and there is no difference in them. If so, there comes this question. If you can use that instead of which whenever you want, well, then why do we have two different things? So when should we use which? Uh, we will talk about that later, Winter. It, it is the next topic. No, not necessarily. You can use that with everything. Everything which starts with which, actually. Okay, you can always replace with which with that. But there is a one very important thing you must always notice, and that is that if your clause is non-restrictive, Non-restrictive means it has commas. If your clause is put in within commas, you cannot use that because that is never used in non-restrictive clauses. So, to uh, conclude it, which and that are interchangeable uh, relative pronouns, but you can never use that. in non-restrictive clauses. And here's the thing, if you are going to like study American English, in American English, uh, many American dislike it when you use which, when you can use that. Non-restrictive means like, if the clause is put within commas. Uh, that's it. But there's one more thing. You can also sometimes, so for which, you can always use that instead of it, if it is a restrictive clause. But sometimes you can use that instead of who. What do I mean by sometimes? Sometimes if you change them, if you like change their uh, the word, 
the thing that happens is that the reader becomes confused. See, like in this example, the burglar who is suing the homeowner was booed in court. If I change that with who, my sentence may become confusing and the reader may become confused. So whenever you think the reader may become confused, if you change who with that, then do not use it. If you are pretty sure they are not getting confused, then you can do it. Yeah, it is just to avoid confusion. Any questions uh, about adjective clauses? If not, we will just move on. Bacon, I will reply a message of Chima for you. Read this. Oh, sometimes you should, Sidra, because sometimes the thing is not necessary. You will... Exactly, in adverbial clauses, this is going to be more understandable. Um, Winter, what you said is a very good example, but not for the usage of that and who. It is good for the usage of restrictive and non-restrictive. Oh, I can't see English. Restrictive and non-restrictive uh, sentences, clauses. Actually, sorry. You have one question. Okay, go on. Um, what? Oh, wait. You had a question and you asked it, but I couldn't answer you. I said what is an adjective clause. Oh, okay. The question, yes, that I asked him. We replied. We omitted that because it is a relative pronoun and it is not acting as a subject.
And now let's move on to adverbial clauses. Adverbial clauses. What is an adverbial clause? Adverbial clause is no verb, no, it is a clause, so it has a subject and a verb. Okay, no. So basically, an adverbial clause is a group of words with a subject and a verb which acts as an adverb uh, and basically this is the definition of clause and adverb itself that's the thing and now we are going to talk about adverbs before going for adverbial clauses we need to know what an adverb is what is an adverb comes the question Oh, wait. Okay. So what is an adverb? I'm still waiting. A word that changes the meaning of verbs? No, not, no, no word exists which uh, changes the meaning of a verb. The words which gives attribution to the action, okay? Describing how the verb is done. Mm -hmm. uh, any other ideas? Adjectives are things that describe verbs. Uh, for now, so the full definition would be something else that we will talk about later. But for now, let's just go with verbs. Adverbs are things that define verbs. Beginner definition. So let's let's see if anyone can come with any example. Come up with an example if you can. Congratulations, Winter! You just got the star roll. Run speedily. Instead of speedily, we use another ad adverb, which is fast. We say run fast, eat quickly. Okay, one more example. 
Let's just see Grace typing something. She spoke softly. Yes, Mr. Nobody. That's correct. So, adverbs are basically defining and talking and giving more in information about verbs, such as she spoke softly, like he left quietly. Uh, you ate your food quickly. Yes, all of these are examples of adverbs. And you, in all of them, you can see that they are describing how the action was. We will talk about these more later, but that's the first thing. He plays good. Um, I guess good can also be an adverb. Let me check. Um, yes, it can be an adverb, but it is informal. He plays well is a better opinion, better option, alternative that he can use. He plays well. Yes, that works. And he's grammatically correct, but he plays good is not correct because good is an adjective in formal speaking. He sang loudly. Yes, that works. We, these are all for the beginner definition, though. We said there is a more complete definition. And what that is? I mean, if you go somewhere and you say that adverbs are things that describe verbs, they are not, like, going to say you're completely wrong and anything, uh, they may forgive you because that is something that uh, many people are told at first. But adverbs are basically things that define adjectives, verbs, or other adverbs, as Chiman said. Exactly. And now you may be wondering, what are you talking about? All adverbs that I have seen in my whole life were just describing verbs. My whole life was a lie. And I tell you, no, it wasn't. You have actually seen all the adverbs, but you were just not aware of the thing that they were explaining and defining. <laughs> okay. Yes, from now on, it is not a lie. You know the truth. Let's uh, go with an adverb which modifies an adjective. Take a look at this. The horribly grotesque and this is actually a bit hard to read. Gargoyle was undamaged by the debris. You needn't, uh, you don't need to actually understand the whole thing, because it has some uh, hard words. But I can give the definition of each word. Like I'm just going to Google it and send it for you. The grotesque is ugly, uh, it means ugly, and gargoyle means an animal or a human statue. You do not really need to uh, delete your messages, but okay. <clears throat> so it says, the horribly grotesque gargoyle was undamaged by the debris. In here, our adverb is, well, find the adverb. I'm not going to say it, and I guess it is going to be easy. Yes, hurriedly is an adverb, and well, we found it because it ends in ly. Most of, not all of them, most of the adverbs end in ly. But like some of them, such as fast, do not end in ly, as you can see. Like, well, it doesn't. Oh, like sometimes hard. It also does not end in ly. And some other examples. Like, literally, yes, literally is another adverb. In, the, in this example, 
in this example that we had, hurriedly is our adverb. And it is defining the adjective grotesque. It is not defining any verb, but it is just defining an adjective. Let's go with another example. Peter had an extremely Asian face. This is our example. Well, finding the adverb is not going to be hard for you, so I'm just going to bold it. Yes, extremely. And extremely is defining Asian. Asian is an adjective. Oh, wait, wait, sorry. It is Ashen. I'm just pronouncing it bad. But yes, basically. I can... No, it is not Asian. It is Ashen. Ashen means to be very, like, white face. Or when you're, like, so shocked or surprised or, like, you're ill, your face becomes white. That is, like, Ashen. So, extremely in here is an adverb which is describing ashen. One more example, and we will move on. She wore a beautifully, be beautifully, oh, what did I say? She wore a beautifully designed dress. Beautifully in here is not describing wo the verb wearing, wore, okay? It is describing the word designed dress. But we said, sometimes adverbs define other adverbs. What is that? Here is an example of it. Peter Jackson finished his assignment remarkably quickly. Find the adverb. Actually, adverbs. Find the adverbs and say... What are they defining? Someone says remarkably, someone else says quickly, and Naram says both of them. Yes. Remarkably and quickly are both different adjectives, and they both define different things. Quickly is an adverb, remarkably is defining quickly. Yes, you are correct. So see, in here we have quickly as our adverb. Quickly and remarkably are our adverbs. Quickly defines the word finished. Actually, not defines. Uh, talks about yes about the word finished while remarkably is giving information about the adverb quickly and it is going to be the verb yeah and just like that we have it Um, for now, I'm going to give you a sentence, and you should tell me if it has an adverb or not. If it does, find the adverb, and then tell me what is, what is it defining. Is it modifying an adjective, a verb, or an, a, another adverb? So this is the example. Find the adverb, and say if it is... Modifying, how did we write modifying? Okay, yeah. Modifying a verb, adjective, or another adverb.
yes, the adverb is badly. And is it, what is it defining? Oh, okay, Hero. Good night. Take care. Thank you for staying with us till now. Yes, badly is our adverb and it is defining the adjective trained. Exactly. Sidra, you got it. So did Winter. But this is not training, it is trained. Just saying. Let's go with another example. We have this example. We are showing kids a world that is very sensely populated with women and female characters. This is part of a quote from, a, from an actress you may or may not know, Gina Davis. Does anyone know her? Okay, so you, you do not know her, but okay, she is an American actress, the same. Yes, the adverb is Santali, and what is happening? It is modifying the adjective populated. It is describing an adjective. Okay. Yes, it is true. It is describing the adjective populated. Santali is our adverb and it is doing so. Are we done? Or is there anything more that we can talk about? If you are not done, then what? Oh, yes, Mo got it. Do not forget that very is also an adverb. Yes, Rainbow. Very is describing Sansali, and Sansali is describing populated. So in this example, very is an adverb which is defining another adverb. And that's it. So we have different types of adverbs, but I'm not going to talk about them. But we're going to talk about different types of adverbial clauses. They're basically the same. They have the same types and categories. But, well, I just want to start with adverbs of <clears throat> uh, adverbial clauses. So, adverbial clauses have different types. They can be an adverbial clause of time. Okay? So... Actually, how many categories do adverbs have? We have like adverb of time, adverb of place. What are the other ones? We have adverb of quantity, yes. We have adverb of manner. We do not have adverb of thing. Quality, yes, we do. So see, we have different types of adverbs. We have adverbs. Uh, are yes, no words adverbs? No, they are not. I guess by... Oh, yes and no. No, they're not. They're just... I don't know what they are. They're exclamations, yes. But they're not adverbs. 
I guess you said all of them. We have adverbs of. Time. Place. Manner. Reason. Yes. Comparison. Exactly. You, you have studied well, actually. I guess that these are all. No, we also have one more. Two more, actually. Adverb of concession and adverb of condition. Uh, and right now we are going to talk about adverb clauses. So you see, like, we have time, place, manner, reason, comparison. Yes, so these are for, like, adverbs themselves. But, like, the last one, uh, condition, it is for adverb clauses. No, wait, Shiman, I disagree with you. We do not have yes, no. Yes and no are not adverbs. There are exclamations. Unless I just misunderstood them. Okay. So we said you have different types of adverbs. Let's see some examples. From now on, we are going to face a quote. Sometimes we may face a quote. Like now. I will share the quote with you. Anywhere the struggle is great, the level of ingenuity and inventiveness is high. Economists, Eleni Zaud, okay, and like the rest of the name. Find the adjective, uh, sorry, find the adverb clause, adverbial clause. Let me see if you can actually find it without me saying how this adverbial clause is made. Anywhere, yes, Sivra. Anywhere the struggle is great, it is the adverb, uh, it is the adverbial clause. And ad an adverbial clause of place starts with a preposition or a subordinate, uh, one of the following subordinating conjunctions. Is native English the teacher? What do you mean? Did, did you mean uh, if I am native or not? I'm not native, actually. To see, an adverbial clause of time starts with a preposition or one of the following subordinating conjunctions. Anywhere, everywhere, where, or wherever. And now you may just jump out of nowhere and say, wait, what is a subordinating conjunction? I do not have any idea. And here I will just tell you, a subordinating conjunction is basically something which links a subordinated clause. Okay? This is the definition of subordinating. Yes, anywhere the struggle is great, it is our dependence clause. 
and it is our adjective clause. Oh, sorry, adverbial clause. Wait. Chiman, if you have time, can you like check Oxford? Maybe I missed something, but. And they are both reliable sources, actually. No, Sid, right? See, we said uh, that we have different types of clauses, okay? Let's see. Let me give you an example. Keeps your uh, keep your hand on the wound until the bleeding stops. Okay, so this is an example, and until in here is a subordinating con conjunction. The bleeding stops. Okay, so until the bleeding stops is a clause, and keep your hand on the wound is something else. It is just basically connecting these two clauses together. So if you have an independent clause and a dependent clause, to connect these two, you use a subordinating conjunction. It is literally the name. So you use subordinating conjunctions to connect a dependent clause to an independent clause. We talked about dependent and independent clauses before. Oh, okay. So that's okay. It makes sense. What is independence clause here? Uh, I actually didn't give a good example. Let's go with this one. The reason for that is because that is, I actually do not know the English word, that is telling the person to do something. L let's go with this example, okay? A sea will sleep wherever there's a bed. Okay, the dependence clause, in the independence clause in here is a sea will sleep. And wherever is our subordinating conjunction. <clears throat> will is our verb wherever is our subordinating conjunction it is just something else okay so it is giving Additional information. Wherever there's a bed, okay, it is all together. It is a dependent clause, okay? And wherever is the subject, is is the verb, and there a bed is just like the other group of words in, in that dependent clause. See, although wherever is a subordinating conjunction, it is a seal and uh, it is a seal of subject. Can it be an independent clause? No. Yes. There is a bed can be an uh, can be an independent clause. Give me five minutes.
Okay, I'm back. Sorry, uh, the class has been going on for a bit long. I was, I was getting lost. Now I'm good. So, see, wherever is a subordinating conjunction, wherever is a subordinating conjunction. Wherever there's a bed is an adverbial clause of place. To see, let me do something. Adverbial clauses are either adverbial clause of time. I'm just going to put all of them in one message and then we can talk about them because it is, it would be more understandable. Uh, I'm not talking, that's the reason. I'm literally not talking. That's the reason she cannot hear me. I'm so sorry. I'm just typing something. Emma, can you hear me? Are you able to hear me? Here, let me type it in the chat just to...
Can you hear me, Emma? Oh, I know the rest of you can hear me. I'm just asking Emma because no, huh? Must be your audio then. Okay. Blessed Rob, take care. I'm very sorry that it is taking a bit long, but I promise the result is going to be good. I these may be confusing if you want to uh, take all of them separately, but if you just saw all of them in one simple one message, you can understand them pretty well. That's least in my opinion. Uh, I'm Iranian, actually. And I guess we are done with them. So, yes. I introduce you. All adverbial clauses. Different types. So, we have seven different types of Adverbial clauses. The first one is adverbial clause of time. They start with one of the following subordinating conjunctions after, as, as long as, as soon as, before, no sooner than, since, until, when, or while. You do not need to memorize all of them, but like the important ones are as soon as, until, when, and while, okay? And before, you can just have these and be happy. Uh, and there is an example. After the game has finished, the king and pawn go into the same box. Actually, I guess you can all read read them for yourselves. If you had any questions, ask me. I will give you like seven minutes to read them. And if you had any question, you can ask. If not, we can continue. Because like, it is nothing. I should just say it like this. I'm so sorry for this way, but I guess this is going to be the most effective, at least now.
Uh, okay. So I guess you may have read some things for now. Uh, let's first answer the date wall. You said in your sentence, there is no adverb. Okay, so your sentence is made of two independent clauses. The first one being, God made the country. And the second independent clause, man made the town. In your first independent clause, God is the subject, of made is a verb, the country is the object. In the second one, man is subject, made is a verb, the town is the subject, sorry, the object, okay? There is no adverbs in here. But as for the long message that I sent for you, do you have any questions? Because it is something that you should just be read. And if you have been, like, messing with English for some time, you can understand them very easily. So, like, well, as it is making a comparison, Winter, okay? It is saying that, like, he's very tall, so he's very smart. You know, he's showing the degree of his smartness with using his height. Yes, what you said, Diana, is actually correct. As God made the country, man made the town. If that was a thing, as God made the country, would it have been adverb of manner? If you look at adverb, adverbs of manner, you can see that they sometimes start with a subordinating conjunction of as. Yes, I, I agree with Winter. Difference between though and although, they do not have a difference. They're just like the same thing. Although is a shortened form. Though, although, although, though is casual. So, you know, uh, like if you're just writing something, a formal letter or something, you use although instead of though. Though is like more used in a spoken language. So, I guess that's enough. You can always... Um, Chiman, can you pin the message that I had about that baby clauses? So see, people, that's it. Adverbial clauses, we have seven different types. I'm just going to do a very fast review of them. Adverbial clauses of time, they talk about the time of something happening. Adverbial uh, clause of a place, it talks about the place of something. Adverb clause of manner, it talks about how something was done. Degree or comparison talks about, uh, like, how much something was done, or it just compare it to something else. Adverb of reason says the reason something was done. It is usually, it usually comes with a subordinating conjunction because, like I say, I did this because I thought it is going to help you. Because I thought it is going to help you is going to be adverbial clause of reason. We have adverbial clause of condition, which states a condition, like a conditional sentences that we had. They all had adverbial clauses of condition. And finally, we have adverbial clause of concession. Concession in word, in vocabulary, means uh, something like synonyms for it would be an exception, okay? So basically, in these types, you are going to say something which has the opposite meaning of something you said, or that like conveys an opposite thought. For example, I say, the weather is good, but I'm not going to go out. Okay, in here, you are conveying a different thought, which is not expected. Okay, and thus, but is a subordinating conjunction for concessions. But, like, memorizing all of them is something, and using them is something else. 
how can you know when to use each of them? And if any of them are there, how can you find out what kind of adverbial clause are, are there? So basically, it is pretty easy. You just ask a question. Adverbial clauses of time answer the question when. Adverbial clauses of place answer the question where. Adverbial clauses of manner answer the question how. Adverbial clauses of degree or comparison answer the question of how much or how many. Adverbial clauses of reason answer the question of why. Adverbial clauses of condition do not answer any specific question, actually. Like they say, if something, then what? And finally, adverbial clauses of concession are answering this question. We will understand that with some examples, because examples always help. So I'm going to show you some examples, and you're going to tell me what kind of adverbial clause are they with the usage of these questions? Okay, so we have these very beautiful quotes from a novelist. If all the rich people in the world divided up their money among themselves, there wouldn't be enough to go around. Novelist Christina said. First of all, find the adverbial clause. Find the adverbial clause and say which type is it, is it from. It seems difficult but we will solve different examples so you will understand it yes super force you got it but what is the adverbial clause no if is a subordinating conjunction it is not its adverbial clause exactly dj12 said it if all the rich people in the world divided up their money among themselves this is our adverbial clause, and it is adverbial clause of condition because it is a stating a condition. Basically, any, literally any if clause that you see is an adverbial clause of condition. All of them. Let's go with another example. This one is also very beautiful, and it is from an uh, author. It is from an author named Barry Nail. It says, a loud voice cannot compare with a clear voice, even if it's a whisper. Find the adjective clause, uh, find the adverbial clause, and declare its type. It 
even if it's a whisper. Yes, that is the adverbial clause. And what is this type? Winter, try participating. I know you may be scared of these, but don't be. So the adverbial clause is even if it's a whisper. Okay? Now try to find which kind of thing is it. Is it an adverbial clause of time? Is it showing any time? Can you like use it to answer the question where, when? Oh, good job, Winter. Good job. Yes, naive noodles. You are correct. It is not comparison. It is adverbial clause of co concession. Okay, I know these last two concession and condition may be hard, especially concession, but don't worry. Anywhere. Okay, so we are just going to use something else. Anywhere that you saw. Although, though, even though. Or even if, be sure that it is an adver it is an adverbial clause of concession, just like that. So, like these two were hard, but now we we know how to find them. So whenever you saw although, though, even though, or even if, it is an adverbial clause of concession. And whenever you saw an if clause, it is an adverbial clause of condition. And just like that, we can always find these. Let's go with something else. We have this example. She's no bright as she thinks she is. What kind of ad adverbial clause is this? First, try to find the adverbial clause, and then we can talk about this kind. We know for sure that it is not an adverbial clause of condition or concession, because it is not an if clause, and it also does not have although, though, even though, or even if. So it is none of these. But it has another subordinating conjunction. But what is that? Yes, subordinating conjunction is as. Exactly, naive noodles. It is uh, an adverbial clause of comparison. She is not so bright as she thinks she is. Okay, so we had put comparison degree in the same thing because they kind of like are like each other. As you can see, it is comparing her real self with the thing that she thinks she is. So her real self with her imaginary self. It is comparing two things. <clears throat> Let's go with another example. A vacuum is a whole lot better than some of the stuff that nature replaces it with. Concession means exception. Okay, something which uh, it has a different thing. It is actually the action of conceding or granting something. Okay, allowance, modification. But in here, it basically means something that has opposite thought. It conveys an opposite thought. Although we are far from each other, I feel like you are near me. 
We are far from each other, so I should not feel that you are near me. But I do. So I use although. I'm conveying an opposite thought. So although we are far from each other is an adverb of cause of concession. As said by Tampi and Tampai, actually, sorry, and Jait Wall, yes, it is again an adverbial clause of comparison. Can you show me what is the adverbial clause? Can you type the adverbial clause or just like copy paste it? Better than no. It is than some of the stuff that the nature replaces it with. All of it is the adverbial clause. And here's something interesting. Actually, let me check it. Is it interesting? So I guess in here, better is an adverb, and thus it is explaining another adverb. It is explaining an adverbial clause, as we talk, talked about it earlier. We said that adverbs can explain other adverbs. One final example, and then we can move on. As soon as you trust yourself, you will know how to live. It is from a writer. Find the adjective adverbial clause. So first of all, write down the adverbial clause. And when you wrote it down, tell me what kind of adverbial clause is that. As soon as you trust yourself, yes. Uh, it is actually an adverbial clause of time. Okay, you may say it has as, as, so it must be condition. But no. See, you, sometimes uh, it is showing adverbial clause of time. As soon as is a subordinating conjunction that whenever we cite, we should know that it is talking about time. Like whenever you trust yourself, you will know how to leave. As soon as you trust yourself, you will know how to leave. And that's it. One final note about adverbial clauses. They are always non-restrictive. And you can always omit them from the sentence. And thus, you should always put them in commas. Any adverbial clause that you see is going to be put in a comma. That's it. Let me type it. And I guess we're done, actually. It was quite a long class. And it was quite a long sequel. We had a two-session sequel talking about clauses. You know, in our everyday life, we always use clauses. And clauses are no easy thing to learn, okay? They are so deep and have so many things that we should always notice when we are learning them. But we tried to take a step in this journey and explore them together, understand how they all work and what they are. In this way, we evolved and were enlightened with knowledge. I also tried to talk about everything, like every basic thing. That is important, like we talked about objects, we talked about complements, we talked about subjects, adverbs, adjectives, and we learned many things we may have forgotten or never learned them thoroughly and completely. 
I hope these two sessions have been useful for you. And I hope I have I had been a good teacher. It was my first experience. So I don't know. Okay. Um yeah, that was actually a very good lesson. And yeah, Magical definitely does have the potential to be a fascinating teacher. I agree. Um, hopefully you all enjoy this lesson uh, on adjective clauses and adverb clauses, as well as his last lesson about uh, noun clauses and clauses in general. So yeah, that will be it for today's class. For tomorrow's class, I will do a different topic um, and about, you know, 10 more grammatical, uh, well, 10 more uh, violations of standard English that natives tend to do. Um, but yeah, that'll be my, that'll be it for today. Thank you all so much for being here. And until next time, I wish you poggers, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.